And that's why I'm not allowed to go to circuses anymore. And it was a very traumatic experience and it really changed my life. I don't know if it was for the better, but it was definitely, you know, more towards the worst. So, I but hello, everybody. It. Welcome. I don't understand why they put lube on water balloons. Who puts lube on water balloons? The people Who? that make them. You didn't know that? If you turn water balloons inside out after you put water in them, they're what? Oh, yeah, they're like jelly. <laughs> I found out this morning that you're supposed to eat applesauce with a spoon and not a straw. Welcome to Off Meta Episode <laughs> 4 or something like that. I can't really remember already. Uh, this is the episode idiot. where we come back from a hiatus. I got married. I went on a honeymoon. Uh, I came back. I had a birthday. I saw Matt in real life. That was pretty cool. He touched my butt. I did literally there might be video footage of it i have to look through like eight hours worth of footage but i found a lot of good stuff in there matt's doing a lot of dancing that's pretty cool <laughs> um beyond light came out halo Water. on pc is complete other things happened in the gaming world um kind of i guess i don't know i don't really pay attention to anything else um cod cod is a thing Pod. That Pod did it come cool. out since our last episode? I don't even know. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Look at that. Um. So, shout out to Andy, aka Enigma. I watch his COD streams. Do you? Yeah. Anyway, so is there is there like a starting point <clears throat> for you today? Um, Do you just want to jump into talking about? beyond light or anything like what do you want to do you have anything what did you how are you doing are you okay pass next question do you enjoy beyond light i really enjoy the pve aspects of beyond light i do i'm gonna be a little bit harsh with my criticisms on this that is only because i'm passionate about the game though i think it was priced a little high for what we got and what we're going to get, considering we still had to pay for the season separately. Um, at least the season pass owners. I know there's a lot of free stuff with the season <laughs> updates, excuse me. But beyond light, I literally feel like I paid for a subclass and a map. And the map is very cool. Don't get me wrong. I love Europa. I love how dynamic it is and feels. It's very cinematic. But my biggest issue and my biggest concern going into Europa was, is it going to be another one of those really big areas where it's just a lot of empty space? And it is. There's not a whole lot of enemies going around. There's not public events happening, you know, pretty often. And I mean, aside from like just just the way it looks, the way like obviously Bungie's like audio team, their visual team, they always knock it out of the park. It looks and sounds amazing, the entire expansion. But I hate the lack of diversity in our loot pool. We got somewhere around like 35 new weapons. If that, it might be weapons and armor that are new. Um, and I, I don't think that's I don't think that's a lot at all. I think we got close to that many exotics added in the Taken King as we did get legendary weapons and armor yeah. added to our loot pool, which. I don't know, I feel They're like insane. if you're going to like postpone a launch. Mm hmm. You know, there should probably be more to show from it. But I again, oh. COVID, like everybody's mm. working from home. I can understand okay. like things are things are a little harder. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have my own thoughts on that as well, but I should have wrote a list down of all the things that I wanted to touch on. Uh, but you pretty much did it. I think that wow. I know um, I thought that Luke Smith has said that they're not putting armor or ornaments in eververse anymore and clearly there's you know new sets yeah. of armor in there that are for black armory stuff and i, I mean, assume oh. 
me so. think god it's ugly i mean Otherwise, the I warlock one, one looks kind of okay money. except for the helmet the titan one's just god awful titan but was I, disgusting. is that because there's no black armory stuff in the game now that's like how they're gonna sell armor is when they take something away they're going to have a theme set of armor in the eververse shop if that's the case, I would have much rather preferred to have Season of Opulence themed gear as opposed to like Izanagi. Yeah. Well, I feel like forges and stuff anyways were really I I think that something Bungie really suffers with, especially with the season stuff, is they create these activities or like routes of gameplay too. Um, and that's like menagerie and the forges and stuff like that where Nothing gets updated after it. Nothing. They don't improve it. It's just forgotten. They work on it for six months before the season releases, and then they move on to the next thing, and they don't curate anything. I don't know. Right. I wish that they would have done more with Black Armory stuff. I really enjoy that aesthetic. I think that they should have done more with Menagerie. I can't, again, not a game dev, but I can't imagine it's that difficult to change out the loot pool each season for menagerie like i think yeah people yeah. ran it so much anyways because of all the cool stuff you could get and how it's set up to select your perks and everything but if you do like spare rations in there or you know any type of whatever archetype gun is good i think um like if they introduce like a 600 rpm auto rifle just to the menagerie thing like i feel like people would run that stuff it's the best pve activity that's ever been in destiny in my opinion and it just blows my mind that they did not keep pushing it or expanding i don't know i, I just and to your like your rope is cool and everything um i think it suffers from the mercury syndrome of artificial expanse where you know, there's one point of fast travel. They force you on your sparrow, even though Mercury you can even do that in the beginning. Right. They so make, they make you live. Yeah. In that area and see everything, even though you don't want to. It's, yeah. it's like their way of forcing you to recognize how big it is. Yeah. I'm like, it's cool. It looks cool. It's a it's a pretty different atmosphere than anything we've ever had. I love snow environments i guess in games i enjoy that a lot um hoth in star wars is my favorite like scene in anything um yeah, movie wise it's my favorite yeah it's so cool and snow. like the aesthetic you can do i like that um but before you go a little further how i'm gonna do go all the way feel about them taking like black armory and menagerie entirely out of the game obviously they're doing it for like storage capacity and stuff like that like there's a bunch of stuff that they aren't going to be updating so they feel like it's better especially with like weapon and armor sunsetting that stuff's kind of pointless unless you're going to be running around like shooting dregs and stuff all day in pve or yeah. doing like normal strikes or like just your average quick play stuff i believe you can you can't pull any of that stuff out of collections can you no so because it's random, random. Holes. yeah so i mean if there's like no way to farm those anymore right or if you've never saved it you know i i still that's another thing i think the collections tab has to be oh i guess it doesn't have to be it's up to them but should be expanded upon like if you have a roll of a certain gun you should be able to like or like a perk combo, you should be able to. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I guess so. Be able to save a yeah like, fan favorite perk. Roll. Yeah, because there are I mean, not even that. Like some, I'd be okay if they just randomized the weapon roll. But then, then people are gonna complain and be that. like, they'll be like, oh, but you got a a god roll, whatever blast furnace, and you never. You only did the forge one time, you know, you you farmed it with materials. You didn't you didn't earn it. That's yeah, a big that's, problem with Destiny is people that's who another, say that's another kind of farm though. Yeah. Don't make I it mean, I agree. 
like don't make it cheap obviously like in d1 we had the re- reforge option yep during when was it house of wolves house of wolves i thought that was great yep really like, enjoyed my, it my very first her mercy i think mm-hmm. the, the hand cannon mm-hmm. the very first one i got was dog shit like it was terrible and I reforged it like 10 times and I ended up getting like an Icarus luck in the chamber roll with like rifle. Like it was a God roll. And like that, that one experience I had with that gun alone, like has just imprinted in my mind as why is this still not something in the game? Yeah. And with um, Curse of Osiris, <clears throat> with the, um, the not ritual weapon, the prophecy weapons, I thought, our like the forge was gonna be an introduction to that and Same. so and and then when we got menagerie i mean that was the closest we could get to like handcrafting what kind of role we were gonna get and i don't know if you've touched the um wrath board hunts at all like the mm. seasonal event with mm. uh aldrin mm. you can kind of do that you, oh yeah with like how yeah the you can pick works. your hunt and like what that reward is going to be i don't know if it rotates weekly or not but you like you have a reward and then you can go in in the next two slots like you can exclude or include certain perks in your loot pool so you can kind of siphon out like bad perks the only issue is i've heard from a lot of people it doesn't seem to work it's like you can exclude like field prep or something and still get it to drop so i don't know if Hmm. it like the first mod option that you can slot in your lure. I don't know if that's supposed to like represent the first um, like perk you can get mm-hmm. on that gun. And then the second one is the second perk. I hope not, especially if some of the perks are interchangeable for like which slot they can drop in. Cause that would be terrible. That is like yeah. RNG nightmare. I don't want to get a double field prep SMG. <laughs> yeah. <pass. laughs> yeah. Um, and to your point about like them taking things out and I, I, I don't, in the grand scheme of things, I don't have a problem with it. I don't care if things go to the content vault, as long as there is a future where it comes back new and improved, which they've said multiple times Mm -hmm. is what's happening with all the destinations. I assume there'll be more like Europa where there's dynamic atmosphere slash environment. And I understand Beyond Light is the first expansion and the season has just started and there's new exotics and I guess weapons and stuff to get. But I think I saw, I can't remember what the actual stat was. It was an ungodly amount of like percentage wise of the weapons that had been sunset that you can't earn, Mm -hmm. you know, and then the amount of weapons that were being introduced that weren't like long shadow or like other weapons you could have got before. If it was like 5%, I think that it would have behooved them to have more stuff. I don't know. Is that a wrong word? I have no idea if that's even a word, but Uh, producer Kyle, who is a brand new addition to the podcast, look up and see if behooved is a real word while we, yeah. There we go. Everybody say yeah, hi to Kyle. Silent. His Kyle's not his real name, but um Hello. There he is. He's he's uh, here. He's helping us. In, behooved is a word. Look at that. Goddamn it, SAT. It, it is a duty or responsibility for someone to do something. It is incumbent. Right. I mean you used it out of context anyway. Also, it is appropriate or suitable. Yeah. That's all right. So I guess the second meaning makes Look sense. Look at me and tell me. I'm not smart and cute. So I think that if they would have done that, like had more weapons and stuff like prepared, because you had to have known the game is about loot. Mm -hmm. The game is a looter shooter. Yes. They had to have like, to me, it says more about the state of the game and the company. If they're like, yeah, take everything out. Everybody's going to be fine. Nobody's going to really care because that's, that's such an out of touch response to your audience. So I just can't believe that that's there had it, to have been it actually happened. I, okay. Well, now I'm trying to think of like reasons why, but 
Just and, that. I mean, that was my biggest fear about sunsetting. I think I mentioned it on one of our previous podcasts, mm-hmm. and I know I talked about it before Beyond Light launch on Twitter a lot. Yeah. My biggest worry was that they were going to take out so many weapons that were considered like usable in our PVE and PVP sandbox meta. And they weren't going to add anything that would replace that in those archetypes and those RPMs where it was like, you know, God tier, like S tier level loot with good perks, like things that would replace something that we had. Yeah. And they definitely didn't like they took all this stuff out. And I don't think there's anything added to the loot pool from either Beyond Light or the Seasonal Pass that is like S tier in terms of weapon archetype or within that archetype's like top competitive um, RPM. Yeah. Like we have we have a 180 hand cannon. I think it's the only hand cannon that was added. And it's a 180, the least used weapon frame, especially after this update, like 120s used to be 110s. Yeah, those are those have skyrocketed in popularity. 140s yeah. are everywhere. I I think I've seen more sunshots in the 150 RPM than I've seen 180s since the release. Yep. Scout rifles in general are bad. And they added, I think, two. Maybe maybe just one. That is a 180 archetype. No, there's definitely two. One's from the raid and then one's from seasonal. Um, I they might actually both be 180s. And that is like a very not great RPM in that archetype. Yeah. And it's like it's just it's extremely underwhelming. And a lot of people that I've talked to and borderline argued with on Twitter saying that they would rather have less weapons in the loot pool if it meant they were all unique and i get that i 100 percent get that but uniqueness is only fun yeah for a little while yep and then it's not unique anymore you know you have this gun for a couple weeks i got bored with my guns in a couple days like they all have brand new perks and all the perks are unique they're different they're fun i think the only new perks that i like is thresh which is you get super regeneration on kills just because that's really good for like mowing down like mobs of enemies. And then the, um, I wonder if we're going to say the same one. I don't know if it's a new perk, but surplus. Oh, I was going to say wellspring. That one gives you, uh, the one that refills like your abilities, everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one I'm thinking of then. Yeah. I enjoy that. That's a good perk. It is. It's a great perk. It's a good idea. In this meta where yeah. abilities are everything now. Yeah. Mm. But now I hate apparently, it. apparently the raid has weapons with unique perks too. Like there's one where it like it's basically icebreaker. Like it refills the mag to double capacity over time, as long as you're not using it, I think. <clears throat> yeah. And then there's another one where like breaking a shield or getting an elemental kill. So like I don't know, you're using your energy SMG and you get a kill. You swap to that weapon that has this perk and it does increase damage. Apparently that's really good too. So, I mean, I haven't touched the raid at all. I've yeah. seen bits and pieces of it and I've seen a lot of the loot from it. And the perks look super cool. I'm really interested. I hope I get to run the raid somewhat soon so I can mess around with them myself. But, I mean, and in, in like a wide angle view of the DLC and the season. The loot pool is tiny. Like I said, I'm pretty sure Taken King added more exotics than this expansion and season have added legendaries. And I would be okay with reskins if it meant we had more things to grind and more things that we could swap out, like just the option to swap out things. Yeah. while not handicapping your performance in PvE or PvP would be nice. I don't care if I, I get I Waking Vigil 2.0. Exactly. I just feel that taking away so... And PvP is a different beast because <laughs> you're going to gravitate towards whatever the... If you're not, like, 
a tier one player, you know, your gun skill and everything, where, where you can't use whatever you want to use and do well, the player base is going to gravitate towards whatever is the most effective because that's why wouldn't you? Um, so I think what you're talking about where they've taken so many things away and not added anything back or even reskins or like ways to earn weapons that are not available from other activities. I would have loved to have seen something like that um, with like the Cryptarch, like maybe, you know, you could do a black armory engram if you killed you know 200 cabal or something like when you kill your 200th cabal an engram will drop and focus like that like maybe menagerie was if you kill a thousand hive or i don't know yeah kind of like with last season the uh was it called the defractor for the umbral engrams like yeah whatever that thing was kind of pick and choose like if you mm-hmm. wanted to from the season it had like the yeah, saint like 14 the stuff yeah ones and i saint don't understand ones. how they figure out these systems and then, and then let them die and let them die <laughs> it blows yeah. my mind that the um, community is like yo this was a good idea congrats bungo more of that and they're like all right new season bye pass we're gonna add snow yeah we're gonna f- let it snow baby let it snow i think that And something I did want to say uh, that you touched on way, 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 way back when was the the price. So Mm. the DLC, the expansion, Beyond Mm. Light, is $40, correct? For just the game. 40 or 50. I know the season's $10, right? Yes. So producer Kyle, get on that. So you're saying that this... Beyond Light on its own is forty dollars. With season is fifty dollars. So there you go. So fifty bucks because Hold on. Hold on. why wouldn't you get the season? Okay. What is the deluxe edition? Because I've seen a whole lot of no time to explains out there. Seventy dollars, but you could get the deluxe edition as long as you buy the uh, Beyond Light with season as one bundle. So that would be seventy so. regardless. You can get no if you can get the uh, no time to explain with the fifty dollar edition, but if you want the ornament and catalyst, you gotta spend seventy. Oh wait, is there no way to get the catalyst if you don't have that one? Nah, yeah, catalyst is deluxe edition exclusive now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I sh- no, never mind. <laughs> okay, so anyway, <laughs> so um, fifty dollars for the game. Yeah, and then and with the season, and, and that okay, so with the season. So it costs more than Forsaken. It costs more than, I mean, so in a vacuum, like I think like Curse of Osiris and Warmind, those were 20 bucks, I think. They added new destinations. They didn't take anything away. They added new weapons, Curse new armor. Was pretty terrible. It Curse was. Curse of Osiris, I would Well, story wise, you don't think, well, see, no. and. First of all, you that gotta, felt like a season in terms of content and what was well, added. Well, I think that's a a problem with the seasonal, like how they release. Like, I think seasons are a terrible idea in Destiny. I, I get the yeah. thought process, but we're not getting another quote unquote DLC drop until next year, correct? The Witch Queen, yeah. That's a year from now. Yes. There's just seasons in between. Is it a year or half a year? I'm pretty sure it's like September is Ellie's yelling at me. I'm sorry. That's crazy. Golly. Um, I think it's September or I don't know if they've actually given a date, but I'm pretty sure these type of things are going to be a year. There's no way that it's six months. They won't release a game or an expansion in summertime anyways, just because you have That's to be pretty special. Year. Yeah. Huh? Um, so. I think it'll be a year. I mean, especially with how they're working now, I can't imagine that this is something that's already finished. I think Beyond Light and everything that's going to come in the seasons after this is Destiny 3 stuff before Activision. I get that people are like, you know, oh my God, look at what they've done. But this, they, they've been working on this not for six months. Like Beyond Light didn't take six months to make. This is, that's not how game development works this is something that has been yeah like i i really wish people could grasp that 
and like shadow keep and stuff like all and bungie had two other studios and activision and i know everybody gets super uptight about activision being the worst thing on the planet but a necessary evil and especially when it comes to a game like destiny um where you're getting a lot of help from mm -hmm. you know resources that obviously they don't have now so finances and yeah it's hands-on like manpower and mm -hmm. not that bungie isn't making money but now bungie is split they they're they're not just working on destiny at this point they have at, at least one confirmed other game with rumors of a third um that is, they're working on is it christopher barrett that is spearheading the the new one yeah i'm excited for that one actually well he was pretty good he did a good he did, he did, yeah he did a great job with everything yeah. he was involved with he, he and, was one of those devs that was always like super like hands-on and outspoken about what yep. they were doing even if yeah. there was stuff he couldn't tell us he would let us know that he couldn't tell us and i don't know i miss i miss a good chunk of transparency that the community was able to have with the team during the later days of like d1 and stuff yeah and that's i i talk to people about that in terms of like pvp stuff too because we all make the joke that there's no crucible team ha 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 you know, everybody's left or been fired or whatever it is. I literally and don't like, think there is, though. I don't think they have a designated Crucible team. Or a lead, at least. I don't think that, at least it's not publicly available info. Like, right. I remember when it was like Mantis and stuff, and there was actually things in the TWAB from like the, the Crucible lead guy. And even though, you know, people harass them and stuff like that, and... I wish that things obviously were different. I think if people knew what PVP would come to, they you know, years down nicer. the line, <laughs> yeah, everybody would have been a lot nicer. So, but I, I do miss that. I wish that there, I don't think that the community managers should really not voice their opinion on PVP, but, you know, kind of throw shade right. constantly to that yeah. side of the community or be like, I mean, there's so many infamous quotes throughout the history of destiny like just go play strikes when that's the lead crucible guy or you won though didn't you and by a large margin yeah i just think that those things that's i feel as somebody like who works in like pr i would never be like i would never say that to somebody yeah i, I wouldn't I, feel i totally agree it's it's and that that's like not even from like a pvp player standpoint like mm -hmm. i'm not per i don't ever feel personally attacked by things the devs say but it does not even devs like devs and community managers. When I read it, it it like doesn't register to me why they would say something like that. Like you are a spokesperson. Yeah, why? Like you're a vessel. People in this community are supposed to look to you to and you know feel like they're going to listen to their feedback, their opinion, as long as it is well criticized like obviously some people are a little temperamental there's a lot of people in the community that don't understand how to give actual criticism it's it's like you're you suck uh you don't have thumbs none of the yeah. dev members have thumbs they don't know how to play their own game type of stuff and then there's people in the community that are like genuinely like hey we went into a private match we broke this down here are the numbers here's the percentages like this is something that's in balance like there's no counter to it and then those same people that go the extra step to keep civility in their in like the grounds of their criticism sit there and watch this person throw shade at their entire community. Yeah. Or sub community, whatever. Like, I don't I don't I don't blame people for being frustrated and feel like they're they go unheard. Yeah. But I also don't I don't know, because like I I get it. If I was a community manager, especially me, like I have zero, I want to say zero tolerance, I have very low tolerance for people that just don't use rational thinking yeah. in, in either responses, rebuttals, whatever it may be. It bothers me when people hold their emotional capacity at a level that is lower than like rational thinking, where, you know, people are upset that. Like with with Hunter mains a lot, 
Like we got we got a shade, not shade, not a shade step. Uh, we just got a dodge nerf. There's a lot of people that main hunter. They were like genuinely like frustrated and upset. Yeah. It's like you got to take a step back. Like it's it wasn't a butcher. It happened or more reasonably. And more recently, the uh, Warlock nerf for Shadebinder. There are people I... that were like, actually, like they they uninstalled the game after that because Bungie, quote unquote, killed the subclass. So I'm you, not going to lie. It was, shit. it was the most overpowered. Like, I get that and Ever. I get the nerfs and stuff. But like, I do think that they neutered everything about it just a little too far now. I, I think, don't think so. I think as much as I fine. hate being frozen and stuff, but the thing is, is that all the other things, like the other classes and stuff that can freeze you, it is literally or... just Titan that is broken now. <laughs> let, me, let, me get that, let me get that out there. <sighs> Titan and Warlock launched broken as shit. Hunter launched balanced. That is why people the thought Hunter, Hunter was subclass is literally like the super is Blade Barrage. Like I don't, I get, but it's I not. Think, you can I, you can outrun it. You no, can I'm no at the beginning. The I'm not talking about the little tornado thing, but like the the wind up and everything. The first the, like the first splooge. Sickle. Yeah. But the I, I agree. The 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 tornado, if you get caught in the tornado, I'm sorry. Maybe you can, you can walk out of the tornado, literally. I use I mean, if I if I I'm an idiot and I get like in it. I just use my Titan melee and get out of it. It's very easy. I agree. That's what I'm saying. Titan is broken. Counterplay. Warlock and Titan launched so busted. But how many now... things are broken with Titan on every class already? That's not, what we're That's talking not... about. No, I'm just we're saying they about just stasis. Hunter, you don't like the super, right? That's it. That's the only thing that you think is. I don't like thing. the shuriken. It's, it's not even broken. The I don't like, you have to hit somebody twice in order to I freeze them. I don't like it. I just That's don't like it. They jump around. That's crazy. Annoying. You jump around as a Titan now. <laughs> you can slide 30 feet. You can. I and haven't even gotten the... Their model doesn't keep up with the animation. I literally nope. see people stutter step yeah. and then go into a slide. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a lot of janky... I played against the Bacris Helmet Hunter the other day for the first time. And I don't know, I, I feel like connections are just god-awful anyways. Mm -hmm. But I'm watching this dude teleport using and the ability. Teleport. And he's teleporting <laughs> in a wall and stuff. And, like, yeah. he's flopping around. And it's just... You have to keep one-upping yourself, I think, in their head at least, with exotics and stuff and constantly trying to make things cool and new. And at some point, uh, we talk about power creep and all that stuff. You're going to get to a point where... It's just too much, you know? Yeah. Like, and I think that we are the sniper. What is it? Cloud strike. Yeah. Is that what, so very cool. Very cool gun. It's very cool. I'm sure it feels really good to get a lights out by shooting one person. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, it and does need to, I think that needs to get toned down a little bit. I, 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 and like coming from like montages and stuff. Like, if you're going to put, like, imagine you're watching a montage for Destiny 2 and there's a Cloud Strike clip of a Lights Out and you only see one, one person. No, yeah. yeah, and, like, everybody else is, like, chilling behind a wall. Like, is that cool? Is that a... No. Exactly. Like, it's a highlight, in my opinion. Like, oh, man, that's a quirky, fun moment in Destiny 2, but it's not a show of skill i so think it, do you you'd be better if it only did half damage on the lightning strikes that way if you got two headshots it could one shot people around them yeah i mean that sounds good to me i think it's that not, just not a one kill one bullet yeah I, I just feel like one is like i think the is it like in pve it's a lot easier but is it mm. three crit shots where mm. you get the the cloud storm thing. That's like I have this, no idea. I, I think so. I haven't gotten the gun yet. So, like, I'm pretty sure um, that when you shoot three crits, it makes a bigger storm around it. You know what I would have liked? Tell me. Instead, 
Do you remember um the sniper from D1? Its exotic perk was a stick of dynamite, I think. It was the one that was added. Is it Zen Meteor? Zen Meteor. That was because you had to get three precision. I got a breaker with that. I know you did. That's one of my favorite clips you've ever hit. So it was three. You. It was three headshot kills. Yeah. And then not hit. It was three headshot kills, and then you got a fourth bullet that was like massive. Yeah. Like you could just shoot somebody. I did it have like splash damage. I don't even know. It, yeah, it had a little bit of splash damage. That's cool. Stuff like that I is think, cool to I me. Think something like that for Cloud Strike would be cool. Yeah. Where on. I don't know, in, instead of three, instead of every precision kill, maybe every precision hit, you, like, caused, like, a shock debuff or something. Kind of like um, how you have with Arc Web. Like, you have that little shock thing for a second or two mm -hmm. that kind of, like, debuffs your character. Like, it throws an aura around, like, the outside of your screen. And then, like, if you got a kill, anything that had that shock detonated. I like that. I think that, like, skill should be rewarded. I think that it should be, like, a special thing. I think that you should feel good when you proc something in terms mm -hmm. of, like, an exotic. Do you feel like the skill ceiling in Destiny has lowered since stasis? The ceiling? The ceiling. <sighs> Do you think it's easier now for... I worse players to do better well is that the floor i don't know because it's the uh, i feel like or do you think that adding stasis also increased the skill ceiling because there is a new level of creativity i guess like you yeah can use the walls to block things off completely you can so, use it to get elevation on walls like you stand on it in terms of the the subclass in general, I think it completely it it makes the other subclasses almost irrelevant, in my opinion. Um, some of them are still very good, like Titan Striker thing, but I feel like the skill floor on Stasis is higher, uh, closer to the ceiling of skill. Um, I think that. It helps players with abilities and um, it gives like this, people free kills that they yes. normally wouldn't be able to win. In yes, the freezing aspect of it. There's nothing else like that in the other subclasses. I mean, we have burn and I guess Smoke arc web is probably, kind of, huh? Smoke nades from Hunter or yeah. suppression would probably be the closest thing we have to stasis. Yeah, so, like, there's nothing else like it. And I know everybody has seen the clips where, you know, the average stasis user, and they freeze somebody and miss all their shots, you know, and but then they hit the last one and they die. So I think that, I think when we talk about things like this, it's really hard, especially in Destiny. But I, I go back to the skill floor has been brought up, um, I guess, in terms of the other subclasses. And then maybe the skill ceiling is a little bit higher for your really top end people to do crazy things like the uh, what am I trying to say right here? The engagement in this initiation. Hold on, let me take it. The engagement initiation of the go. Titan. I know, right? I did it of the Titan stasis melee thing. And I know there's an aspect or a fragment that makes you even slide more or something. But if you put on a shotgun mm. and you have any type of gun skill mm -hmm. and you so like what I like to do, uh -oh. um, I don't remember the name of the Mercury map, um, but it's like like A is that long hallway with um, like the one block that covers A and then B is inside and. Anyways, so what I like to do right yeah. right off the rip is I switch to oh, my burnout? shotgun. What? Burnout? The one inside? With like the outside is all purple? No, 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 not uh, because that's the one from D1, right? Altar of Flame. I'm talking about the, no, it's like the one that's like 
in the St. 14s, th- like, past thing in the Infinite Forest? Kyle, come on, do something. Anyways. Fragment? No. It was Are you from sure it's I- Mercury? What? Are you sure it's Mercury? Yeah, it's the one that's from the past. I know what he's talking about. Hold up, I'm looking it up. So, anyways. Was that Burnout? No. No. Time frag? No, not the fragment thing. I can't remember the name of the goddamn map. I'm lost. I'm confused. He's going to tell you, and you're going to be like, oh. No, I don't think he is. I'm trying. <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> think it's, he It's is. the one where, like, it, it's like the golden grass and stuff. Uh, Man, I'm going to punch uh, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Wait, you know it? Radiant Cliffs. Yeah, that one. Yeah. So what I like to I do. Helped. Yeah, you did. What I like to do is from Radiant Rip. Clitoris. I, you cannot say that. Hmm. This is a T for teen podcast. Well, not anymore. It's T for trouble. <laughs> Demon time. Let's go, baby. Anyway, continue. What I like to do off spawn right off rip is press my button to change to my shotgun and i i run and skip as fast as i can and throw my stasis grenade on the other flag the other home flag Mm -hmm. and i freeze three people and then i melee ability from three thousand feet away kill the people that were frozen and then shotgun people that's it's the, the I mean, floor. that honestly sounds like every Titan right now. Well, that's what I'm I saying. So that's specific to you. The floor has been brought up because you're just inherently a better. Are you a, you're not a better player, but you're no. You're, Your kit is unbeatable. Yeah. Whoever whoever uses their abilities first is going to win that gunfight. Yeah. Kind of like Segway Halo. If you use your grenades, you're going to win. OK, so, yeah, I just feel like. Yeah, there's actually, a lot of issues. Let's take a step away from Destiny. Let's talk about Halo. How sad are you? The Infinite isn't out. Well, when you live in constant disappointment every day, mm-hmm. you know, it's just kind of. I said we were going to step away from Destiny. I <laughs> am happy that they're taking the time to. I know. I know one of the big reasons why it is delayed and it's because of the graphics stuff, because the game has to be able to work on like the first generation Xbox ones, like launch day for real. Yeah, it is. It works if the launch day Xbox ones. It has to work on that. So So like complete backwards compatible. Yeah. That's cool. So, I didn't know. Yeah. That. So they, they did not want to leave like anybody out. They want to make sure if like you didn't get a new series, hex. But also. But also. Fuck you. It's 2020 and you're on original Xbox. No, like the one, the the last, like Xbox One. Not oh. like. Yeah, who cares? Like, not who cares? one Xbox. Make them buy a PC. Make them. Who cares? I don't know. The new, the new consoles aren't that expensive anyway. Get an Xbox S. Yeah. No, I, I agree, but I see what they're trying to do. I don't. And they've committed to it, which that's a shame. Is, you can't not because now it's like, oh, my God, Microsoft said they're not doing it, blah, blah, blah. So it's like so they're committed to it. Again. So what they're doing, I assume, is just increasing the fidelity on like trying to create options. So like your the old Xbox will run it at whatever, you know, I'm sure. It's going to look like the original Halo, probably, with how massive the world is and all that other stuff. But trying to create options for PC and the new Xbox consoles that, you know, differentiate them, helps it run better or look better. It doesn't it's not that it doesn't run good. It's just it's trying to optimize it against four yeah. possible different. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. So yeah, I didn't know they were doing all that. That makes way more sense why it's taking so long then. Yeah. So that's that's probably I I I've heard that in terms of content, the game is done. Like the the launch content, mm-hmm. it's done. It's got a bow on it. So I think it's all technical stuff, which is why I'm still hopeful it's a spring release and you don't have to worry about going up against like 
there's supposed to be a battlefield next um holiday season call of duty um destiny stuff like the fall is super the, the typical floodgates yeah. opening and this year wasn't really like that um you had like black ops and stuff but i think that it was way less saturated than it's going to be next year well and with I'm, all the I'm... other delays of games like cyberpunk and stuff i really think that you know it sucks that they didn't release it but i i have hope a lot of wars coming out next year i think too yeah so you're gonna ask people to big that'll be big multiplayer is free in halo but you're gonna ask people to spend 60 bucks or whatever it is to play the campaign um you know is somebody and i'm not trying to throw shade but your typical gamer between god of war and halo what would you rather spend your money on in terms of like playing a story for me with how good God of War has been and the established track record, um, as opposed to Halo 4 and 5, which I enjoy Halo 4 story. Halo 5 was different. And I think that most people are going to be like, wow, I haven't even, I don't even care. I haven't played Halo since 3 or whatever. So I feel like you're really setting yourself up for failure if that is your selling point, um, is that it's a new Halo look at the art style it's it's like old halo Mm -hmm. so i'm still excited i still want to play the game i wish they had like flights for infinite multiplayer plan because that's done all that stuff is done i wish that do you think you'd be invited i think that they're gonna invite a lot of people is that because you're on board with butterfinger hi everyone my name's holotide and this is not an ad but i just want to say thank you to butterfinger for sending me a hat and a sweatshirt, and a book, and some Butterfingers. I enjoyed them. Hashtag game better with Butterfinger. That was beautiful. <laughs> I'm going to at them. Kyle, make sure you clip that. Clip that. We're, we're <laughs> so we can ship it. it. <laughs> we're going to send it to Butterfinger HQ oh. and farm impressions. Farm the impressions. I mean, that's... Because that's what <laughs> we do. We don't have weapons to farm in Destiny 2, so oh now we farm God. impressions on Twitter. Holy shit. That's what I'm you sorry. should tweet. I'm sorry. I that's the you tweet. You can clip that. I'll tweet that one. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so good. I'm clipping the fuck out of that one, baby. That's, that was a good one. Don't you have that again. That's okay. It's worth it. Um, um, but, yeah, oh. I, I've, I've enjoyed playing Halo with you guys on PC and everything. But I can. I'm going to steal the spotlight for a second. That's fine. Everybody, my name is Hostile Galaxy. Um, I have never owned an Xbox. I have never played an Xbox. I didn't touch a single Halo game ever until maybe a couple of months ago when I first played Halo 3 and Halo Reach with Corey. I really hate Halo 3 Pain. in terms of multiplayer. Reach is a little bit better. Halo 4 feels great i might actually thanks to cory tide be a fan of halo i still think playstation's better in every aspect except for a, like everything but we got exclusives on our side but mm-hmm. halo surprised me after playing three i hated it it was so slow it felt super clunky i can understand why like people who grew up playing it would enjoy that more because it's more centric to gunplay Mm -hmm. but also i think you can have a game based on gunplay and gun skill while also adding movement three also you get like five grenades off spawn or something like that and i hated that with a passion i hated getting grenaded twice before every engagement and my Mm -hmm. body grenaded after the engagement (laughs) i'm already dead and i'm still seeing grenades being thrown around the corner because people aren't sure if i'm dead yet (laughs) There are no grenade hit markers in Halo 3. <laughs> there should be no grenades. So Halo 4, <laughs> I like. I really I really enjoy it. And I would mm-hmm. 100%, and I probably will be buying Infinite when it comes out, just because it is, it's nice. I don't know. It's I didn't play. I, well, I again, I multiplayer is free. Do you want to run the campaign with me? Yeah. I'll wake, I mean, I'll wake up on time. Kyle, oh. Mm. That He's one's not even fucked up. Say, 
Yeah, he oh, didn't even <laughs> have anything to say to that. Um, but that's, I think, I do think there's an inherent problem with the Halo community in general. Gatekeeping. And, like, if Halo 3 and Halo 2 and CE are Halo games, Halo Reach, Halo 4, Halo 5, and Halo Infinite will be Halo games. It is Halo. It it has to evolve at some point. It can't just revolve around archaic triangle weapon design philosophy, in my opinion. I think that the game is not Counter-Strike. It, it cannot appeal... In that sense, I know that that's what everybody, they're like, oh my god, Counter-Strike hasn't changed, but it kind of did. And then the Mm -hmm. game also, like, the difference between Halo 3 and even Halo, just Halo 5, is so incredibly large that I am sure it is jarring for people um, that have either never played a Halo or... You know, they skipped out on Halo 4 and picked up Halo 5 because it's on, like, Game Pass or something. I just think that there's too much division. And if you don't like it, don't play it. I mean, now you can literally play Halo 3. There's, like, 30,000 people playing MCC. You know, like, you'll find the game. You'll find games when Halo Infinite's out. I just... I hope that infinite is that middle ground where there are certain abilities. Like I love thrust. I think thrust is such a cool mechanic um, in terms of movement for halo. That is not game breaking. It's not like canon, I guess in terms of like what your Spartan can do. Infinite's going to have sprint and it looks like it's like you look like a 300 pound giant armor suit sprinting you know it's not like you're running a 4.0 40 yard dash you're not booking or anything like that i enjoy that too what was your 40 i ran a four i think the fastest i ever ran was like a (laughs) four five two i think that's really good yeah i well that was when i was healthy that was before the that was philly cheesesteaks pizzas year amen (sighs) But I think I'm excited. I I am excited for Halo. I think in a in a world like BRs and you know Call of Duty is like the only arena shooter, and it's and that's not really an arena shooter to me. I just um, I want a game like Halo. I want Halo. Does that make sense? No. Okay. Um, is there anything out there in terms of like game production currently? that you're looking at aside from infinite or I, have you also gotten to a point where you're not really interested in anything coming out? I was really excited for cyberpunk. Are you still I, excited for cyberpunk? I don't even know when it's coming out. I like the, see, the new I date. I don't understand. Maybe I haven't looked into it enough. Uh-huh. I'm not super into it. I don't think I'm gonna buy it i don't think i'm gonna care when it at first i was not super into it because i thought it was gonna be a very like linear type of open world game Mm. and not something more open like skyrim or those type of rpgs um which i love skyrim you know this fallout yes sir um a little bit less i fallout is cool um to me but i i like the fantasy yeah that's there's like a real story um Mm -hmm. so but i just saw like one of the devs have they've been playing for 175 hours and they haven't done the story so i mean that appeals to to me not to burst your bubble there are also people in our close to our heart destiny 2 community Mm -hmm. that have sank thousands of hours into the game and have left the strike playlist maybe for 200 of those hours. If that's what they like to do. <laughs> They're, but I'm saying like, no, if that I person understand. were to spend 500 hours running strikes and they were like, yeah, man, I love strikes. I've played so and so many hours. 
you if you didn't know anything about destiny you'd be like wow that strikes must be pretty cool and then you hop in and yeah they're not very cool (laughs) like yeah i did i how do you feel about devs playing their own game recreationally do you think that's cool i think it kind of ruins i kind yeah the like future because then they get biased yeah they play the game and they have a favorite loadout, a personal loadout that they yep. ride with, they rock with. I think and when do devs in their power not to not to break that chain, they don't want to see what they love. Yeah. Tarnished. I think when you're building <coughs> Titans, your game, the vision of what you want to produce and stuff, I feel like that's good. I think that they should be like playing their game. But, you know, once it releases it does feel like there's a fine line that can be crossed. I think even games like Battlefield have kind of suffered from that. Mm-hmm. So, well, and I mean, I'm saying this from like a multiplayer perspective, uh-huh. or like multiplayer, quote unquote, competitive, like especially yeah. with shooters, things that have meta changes. But games if like, it's like League... a story mode, I expect the devs to play that. I want them to like immerse themselves in it because I mean, you don't really change anything. In a I think, game. well, with like Halo, there is a professional team that 343 hires. They're made up of like Halo pros mm-hmm. um, to balance the game around. They listen to their input and stuff. And they instead of it, them. Eh, inst- yeah. Well, yeah. They instead do. of it just being like a developer, you know, you have somebody that's played at the highest level and like League of Legends and like all MOBAs, like the devs play, they, you know, if they can't get diamond or whatever, you know, in a season, that's kind of like, why are you, that's kind of a joke to all the other devs are like, what the hell are you doing? You know, if you can't be efficient at your own game, you know, how can you expect other people? Like, if you don't know the ins and outs, then how do you right. expect other people to? Right. But, I I don't know. I don't know. Like Fortnite, I think skill based matchmaking has really sucked mm. a lot of fun out. Like BRs to me are like cool. Like I I think BRs are cool. I I definitely enjoy that there's a new genre of game for people to play. I think that there needs to be like Fortnite is so different from Call of Duty, Warzone, and that's so different from apex i think that all three of those games are unique enough to where they stand up against like all the other brs that come out and kind of fade away like hyperscape was that what that new one was called that died off so fast yeah like those and it was like quote unquote unique but it wasn't like i don't know i i just feel like games get so unique yeah also stable yeah and i mean i i haven't played fortnite in forever i played like season two through five maybe Uh uh-huh and then building got crazy and that was just something that i did i did i don't know yeah you didn't like i could i could build but i prefer not to so the second people would start building i'd literally just leave and look for another same where like the person wasn't going to be trying to go for cash cup qualifiers and pub lobbies like and then warzone i really enjoyed warzone yeah i played it a bit but it was also another one of those like you know it's a stereotypical cod people that aren't great will literally sit in buildings and wait for you to walk by they'll have a heartbeat sensor out whatever and then you end up in a 1v3 because these dudes have a total kitted out arsenal and even though they miss 95 percent of their shots there's three of them you're going down yeah in apex i played it a little bit recently it looks it's in a pretty good spot i like it but like they all have uniqueness like fortnite there's your building there's ways to get your loot there's you know yeah there's like different tiers of skill level in multiple different skill brackets for that game like you can have a great shot and be a terrible builder or you can be a terrible 
shot and be a great builder and like you could trap people or you could play for like time on like boundaries and zones and shit you could know all the rotations but be terrible at everything else and win yeah. by sitting in a bush war zone is kind of mostly gunplay and kind of map knowledge and then apex like they have different teams like there's legends that are their own unique thing they have their own unique abilities and traits and all that stuff and so that alone makes the game feel different the movement in that game is crazy sometimes mm -hmm. and so i think we've reached the point in the br life cycle where no matter what comes out next it's going to be relative to one of those three big mm -hmm. brs and so i don't think there's ever going to be another br that just blows it away its place up there yeah yep. i think it's just gonna be those three until brs completely die out yeah i think that too i think that that's the the trifecta right now and i don't really foresee it changing unless they just stop supporting it fortnite it i don't even think fortnite's a game at this point it's a platform it's mm -hmm. yeah an a giant amoeba of I don't know, everything <laughs> like entertainment wise. I think that Fortnite is just so different. And then we, but then we had a game like Valorant come out and the style mm. is obviously Counter-Strike that round based tactical um, style, but you know, with abilities. And I think that Valorant is different enough and the art style is different enough that it's one of those games that, I, I see Valorant being around for a long time, and I think that COVID has really affected its popularity. Uh, I believe that there would have been insane type of you know tournament land style things with crowds, yeah, yeah. Um, because the way you, there there is something to, and it's kind of like Destiny, but there's something about outplaying somebody with an ability in the right like the region and stuff i think that for or, uh, valorant does really well with um so when you use an ability it's you're there's going to be consequences that you messed up and used it at the wrong time or you know you you do something that's insane and people will be like oh my god blah, blah, blah. i think that stuff like that is very cool and i think that valorant is really going to succeed in terms of excitement and watchability i think that that's something that um, whenever we get out of this pandemic, that's something to look forward to. But even now, the it has staying power. I think that it's inherently a fun game to play. I think that the art style is appealing to casuals um, in the way that Counter-Strike is not. And I know that's probably like a, a weird thing to say, um, but I, I just feel like it resonates with people more. They They don't feel intimidated i feel like so that's a cool that's a design choice that i think really worked out for them um i miss paragon we should probably wrap this up i miss paragon <laughs> i do every day of my life i think about that goddamn game um real quick before we wrap it up tell us a little bit how life as a married man is do things feel the same is waking up every day like a dream how's ellie doing so Ellie is laying underneath my feet right now. Gorgeous. Love her. We Ellie know. is my dog, not my child, for people who don't know about Ellie. That she is, is my both. child. It yes, is both. <laughs> my child. I love her. Um, but truthfully, me and Carla have lived together for two years already. Um, so it doesn't really feel like anything's changed. The only thing that I feel like has changed is the weight of planning the wedding and then planning a wedding for six months in the middle of a pandemic, not knowing if we were going to be able to have it or not, or, you know, if people were going to be able to come mm -hmm. and all the changes that had to be made at the venue and constantly like I had two groomsmen that couldn't come. So like finding two groomsmen to replace them, which worked out fantastically. Um, Oh, the, so, OK, you did replace it. I didn't know if there was supposed to be just two more groomsmen. I was going to say that's a lot of groomsmen. <laughs> no, it was. Um, you had six, right? Eight. Uh, you had no, eight nine. Tyne. Uh, 
Kobe, Mark Honey, Brandon. Brandon. There was one more. Um, the the fit guy, the sexy guy. Oh man, starts with I think an M. There was eight. I don't know. I can't count. I'm just. I think it was eight. Um. So, but Colby and Gabe were the ones that were supposed to walk our parents down. Okay. And um. Yeah. They ended up being my groomsmen, so it worked out really well. Beautiful. But now it's just kind of like you can breathe. Um. It is kind of weird not having something to look forward to or plan now. I feel like. Um, I get, yeah. You, the next. The next step. No. All right. We're going to go ahead and skip. Baby time. No. <laughs> All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching, listening. If you're, you know, you can watch it on YouTube and listen mm. on your podcast streaming service. Mm. My name is Hollow Tide. You can find me on Twitter, Hollow Tide. Mm. And uh, I love, I love applesauce a lot. Cinnamon or just normal applesauce? All of it. Just blueberry applesauce. That's not applesauce. That's blueberry sauce. No, but it's blueberries in the applesauce. Blue, blue apple sauce. Blah. Apple. Blah. Um, I'm Hostile Galaxy. You can find me on Twitter at Hostile Galaxy. Um, spelt like you would normally spell the words Hostile and Galaxy. Just get rid of the space um that's kind of it if you want to follow my twitch you probably shouldn't because i don't ever stream that's the exact same um should we get kyle in on this yeah kyle, i was definitely gonna wanna... tell kyle to say goodbye say goodbye kyle goodbye everyone my name is kyle you can find me on twitter at twitch silent and at twitch.tv silent thank you for watching Bye.